There it is, the Costco chicken. So many people would like this, but I don't want to ruin the chicken for anybody. So let's uh, focus on that bag. That bag. Oh, you guys can see I ate the whole chicken, so don't worry, anyone. I'm not trying to ruin this delicious rotisserie chicken for anybody. Animals, particularly poultry and fish. This looks like it's a chicken. Oh, it's low priced. It's delicious. It's definitely chicken. I ate the whole thing. It's the bag. If you're asking if there are some things coming from the food container, the polyethylene glycol PEG-1500 does seem to be coming from the plastic chicken bag. And I'm not really too concerned about it. Let's analyze the bag. I'm thinking that like I don't like the bag, but you know, I want to be neutral. Let's analyze this and let's see if we can get them to switch back to those awesome cartons they were using. All right, we got the rotisserie bag in the lab. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of clean water here, DI i am H2O. I'm gonna jump a little bit into the bag and shake it up real good. I know I'm gonna get a lot of chicken grease leftovers and everything. We'll spin that all out, clean it up. So here we go. Right, we're just shaking it and it's getting kind of gross. You can kind of see. It's gonna be just kind of, it's gonna be kind of drippy with the water. Uh, and we'll get like get a water oil emulsion going here and we'll take some of that out and put it in a tube. It's getting kind of gross, but I got that slurry down there. Uh, I cut off a pipette tip so I can actually you know, get some of this goo out of here. And I'm getting pretty covered in chicken grease. And there you go, that's what we got here. We're gonna go ahead and put that in a tube. There we go, ew. Guys, here we got them. Um, we got two chicken greasy water tubes, different amounts of chicken grease in them. We'll analyze this twice. Oil residual method, we're gonna add that 80-20 methanol water, spin this thing out, try to get some of that stuff extracted out of the grease. In case anything got you know absorbed from the chicken grease from the bag into the chicken grease. Uh, and then we'll also have the water soluble fraction. So um, we're gonna go ahead and kind of just use a regular oil residual method here uh, using this 80-20 methanol uh, water. All right, yes, I know, proper PPE. Got the gloves on now. We're using methanol. Try to do a better job. All right, so there we go. We're gonna dissolve it up with methanol. That should actually kind of solubilize some of the grease. Uh, but I still think we're gonna have a really kind of gross looking spun out sample here. So we're gonna let this kind of like, really vortex. Try to solubilize the best we can. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and spin these guys out. See, we do look kind of different here. We got slightly more chicken grease goop in one than the other, but we're going to spin both of these out. Centrifuge, pelt things down to the bottom. Hopefully get a nice clean water methanol layer on top. So I'm going to go up to five minutes here. Uh, 15,000 RPM. That split out. Alright, let's see what this looks like off the centrifuge here. Hopefully it pelted it out nicely. Oh, it did. We got a nice colored layer on top. That's what we're after, and all the grease and other stuff sedimented at the bottom. So this should be perfect. Alright, so 300 of each and then 450 of clean water. It's doing the same as all of our other oil extractions, and that gives us something to refrigerate, and then we're gonna spin it out again, and then we'll combine the two fractions and run it once onto the LCM. It's chilling in the fridge, let's see. The idea is to remove any really chunky lipids, but it's looking, it's looking pretty good. We'll spin these out again, five minutes. Chilled in the centrifuge system. Back up. All right, off centrifuge for a second time. We're gonna combine both these fractions because they're from the same spot. All right, Costco chicken bag sample onto the Zevo Q-Top. Looking for anything in that bag that I don't want there. I don't know, plasticizers, polymers, microplastics, anything we can see. Oh, chicken bag data. Look at that blob. I'm guessing that's like, I don't know protein and a bunch of molecules all mixed together, blank on bottom, so we're gonna ignore these little humps and bumps there, uh, and this big washout peak. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out things uh, up here. 
Alright, so this is way too complicated. I've been trying to figure out what these are. So we're going to send them through the MZ mine. There it is. Alright, so tryptophan. That is, uh, you know, everyone knows that chicken and turkey and stuff like that makes you sleepy. Arginine, phenylalanine, a little bit of that vitamin. I think it's like vitamin B. Um, sanitizing agent. That's this answerin. Let's look up that answerin. Answerin is a dipeptide, uh, beta alanine and methyl histidine, uh, derivative carnosine is found in the muscle tissues of certain animals, particularly poultry and fish. This looks like it's a chicken. Oh, I think I got some good news, guys. I'm not seeing any plasticizers. I'm not seeing any polymers leaching out of the bag. I'm seeing a little bit of black pepper flavoring, lots of amino acids and dipeptides that would come from you know, chicken meat, you know, not that, I mean, there's definitely going to be things that are not real on this list, so don't be digging too deep in here, but this looks like good chicken, guys. So, as far as the chicken goes and everything, it looks pretty good, but the only way to really look for microplastics, since they don't show up in databases, is just do little averages, check across here, we just want to confirm that there's no polymer signal. And so then I get to this area over here, what looks like a bit of a polymer signal. I've seen two little subsets of peg polymer. Charge series of that peg, that's probably the double charge. So peg 1500, uh, my guess is that's coming from the plastic bag. Packaging. It's a water-soluble polymer that is used in food packaging and other industrial applications. It is non-toxic. It's not irritating. Um, it has been approved as a food additive in most countries, including the United States. So I guess it's not a big deal, but if you're asking if there are some things coming from the food container, the polyethylene glycol PEG-1500 does seem to be coming from the plastic chicken bag. And I'm not really too concerned about it.